Another very profound aspect of awakening is it's the dissolving of the identity, it's the dissolving of the me and the separate, the separate being and the recognition that there is a oneness that runs through everything, not as an idea, not as a concept, but actually experientially a very embodied experience of what that is. And it's beyond the mind and it's beyond death. Mm. It's, the, it's what we are beyond death, beyond the mind, beyond all imaginings, beyond all ideas and concepts of what we, we've been taught to believe that we are. And um, all identity is just dissolved in that space. Hey, welcome back to Soul Awakenings with Madhya Sosan podcast. And today we have Dian G. Dian G is a spiritual life coach, teacher, and healer. She's also a director of Elevate Your Mind company, which focuses on mental well being, spiritual development, and successful living. She has an extensive background in meditation for 40 years along with therapies, Reiki, sound healing, Durshan and energy healing of 25 years. She is a gifted healer, psychic and intuitive guide. She has organized spiritual events, retreats, women's circle and gatherings for over 10 years now alongside her healing work. Now, there is so much more to this woman. Let's bring her on. Hi, Dianji. How are you doing? I'm great, thank you. Lovely to be here. Thanks for inviting me on. Yeah, I mean, um, I was thinking about when when did we meet? We met, gosh, we met years ago, didn't we? And we were just in each other's lives. Yeah. Life. Yeah. It's, it must be, is it three years ago now? Yeah. yeah. It, it must it, have been, oh, through our uh, friends, uh, Lucidia and Raphael. And uh, yes. Yeah. So you were working with them at that time and it was during pandemic actually during lockdown and we were yeah we we were online and they were singing and you were their manager at that time helping them out <laughs> yeah. and then we crossed paths randomly in uh, events and I gave a, a talk at your own event mind body and spirit event in uh, Netwitch and yeah it was, since then I was like okay yeah I need to get her on because you know she shares um, amazing wisdom and knowledge and our listeners need to no <laughs> really so I know who you are our listeners don't know who you are so can you tell us a bit about yourself a, a brief overview of who Dianji is yes of course so um my name's Diane. I was born in Stoke-on-Trent in 1975 my life took me on a very uh, spiritual uh, path from a very early age. I had my first awakening when I was six. I moved to Osho's uh, community in Oregon uh, when I was seven for three months. And in 2012, I had another awakening and I started a group in Congleton in Cheshire and um, a spiritual um, gathering of beautiful minds and I brought in people from all over the world and also bef just before that I'd met a wonderful lady called Dawn who was my kind of cheerleader and supporter and saw who I was and wanted to help um, help get me out there I guess you could say so I actually ran these events in her space and sometimes she was there and sometimes she wasn't but she was very much um, encouraging me to speak and to keep going and and all these things. So I've had a lot go on in my life, to be honest. There's there's a lot we could talk about. There's a lot of stories. There's a lot of different aspects to my life. I've been down many roads looking for my career, as it were. Um, I've done some really funny things over the years and when I look back and. Um, yeah, everything has brought me here, of course. And now I am 
um, offering darshan healing, uh, teaching, helping people um, and the world actually with the awakenings that are happening. And I'm doing this in various ways through groups, events, one-to-one -one work and healings. I've also spoken at quite a few events and festivals this year, and I will continue to do more of that. Love working with groups of people. And something that happened over the last sort of three years as well is uh, something shifted with my voice. And I began to share something that I'm calling frequency healing, um, which is basically sounds coming from my vocal cords that I've been sharing as well as drumming now. Mm -hmm. So things have changed a little bit, but the essence of everything that I'm here to share is, is the same, essentially. What is uh, darshan healing? What is that? Great question. So darshan is, it. well, its meaning is to see beyond the illusion. So to see the truth of life. So through that, that healing, I'm offering the opportunity of presence. And it's also activating the kundalini in the person. But I know from how I've worked with people so far, I'm doing this in a gentle way where people um, can adjust to the energies. And if they're already on a spiritual path and they're having an awakening, it can help to ground those energies in the body. Mm. Um, I have helped people who've had Kundalini awakenings. They've come to me and then I have done that. I've grounded those energies within them. And I've also, been with people, um, well, in my one-to-one -one work, people have had very powerful awakenings and I've guided them through that process. So this is this is this is really everything that I'm doing. This is the whole point in my work is helping people get to know who they are, who they really are, beyond all the illusions, and also helping people heal themselves. So through that knowledge, through their own knowledge and wisdom, helping them access the tools so that they can heal themselves and bring themselves back to wholeness and oh. see the perfection in who they are, essentially. Yeah, so you, you mentioned uh, Kundalini Awakening. Now, some of our listeners might not know what it is and what, what do you go through during Kundalini Awakening? So uh, the awakening process... We can have many experiences of awakening. Now, I know that this word is kind of being thrown around a lot these days, and it's being associated with lots of different things, as we do with words. We associate, it, we associate them with things that they aren't necessarily that. So for me, my um, the way I would explain what awakening is, is it's a shift with the energy in the body from the head into the heart so that we recognize the oneness and the connection that we have with everything around us, with everyone and everything. And we see ourselves for who and what we truly are. Mm -hmm. Kundalini awakening is the, the rising. So there is uh, considered to be an energy at the base of the spine that's coiled like a snake. This is the Kundalini. And as the kundalini rises up through the spine and through the chakras, it awakens various aspects of the being. And as it rises and goes through the top, through the throat chakra, through the head and out, we have what's called a kundalini awakening. And that's the recognition then that we are consciousness and we are connected with everything. Now, this can be very sudden and shocking for the person and even frightening in some cases. But more often than not, it's, it's a gradual process that happens throughout life. Um, and sometimes, as in my own journey, it can happen very spontaneously, very calmly and very beautifully. But sometimes, it can shock the system, it can flip the lid on the subconscious and we can have um, sort of 
experiences of breakdowns or psychological issues or what we consider mental health issues. Now, my understanding of all of that is that most mental health issues are a spiritual breakthrough. Mm-hmm. Um, in society, we are not, we've not been taught how to deal with that. So it gets misdiagnosed and people get put on a lot of medication where often what they actually need is someone who can guide them through what they're experiencing. Of course, there are um, there are times when we, people do need medication and they do need professional help, but there are also times when it's a spiritual crisis and they need that that kind of support. Mm. I hope that answers that yeah, question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I, I I feel like uh, when I, I when I had my awakening yeah like seven years ago and it was quite similar. I felt like I was going crazy. It was almost like a breakdown, but also like a blissful moment. Moment, it was like up and down, up and down, up and down, and I could feel tingling in my back. I could feel tingling around my heart area. So, is, is, does that mean that like Kundalini might be working its way up? Um, Absolutely. Yeah, and even meditation, I would um sit and just spin, <laughs> completely spin, and like I would get like tingles everywhere. But there was a like I was shifting into a different perspective in life as well at the same time and it's it's scary like you said you can easily we have this idea in a society we have this idea of this is how this is my identity this is how I am and this is how I'm gonna be and then all of a sudden something happens that's an awakening that shakes everything and Mm. you're just left with oh my god it's clean slate and what do I do with this that void and then the dark night of the soul happens right yeah well we can have um with my own experience I had quite a few dark nights of the soul before I actually had that kind of blissful phase that then went into um a very spontaneous uh blasting away of my my identity essentially so yeah that's a really good point actually the other very profound aspect of awakening is it's the dissolving of the identity it's the dissolving of the me and the separate the separate being and the recognition that there is a oneness that runs through everything not as an idea not as a concept but actually experientially a very embodied experience of what that is and it's beyond the mind and it's beyond death Mm. it's it's what we are beyond death beyond the mind beyond all imaginings beyond all ideas and concepts of what we we've been taught to believe that we are and all identity is just dissolved in that space Mm. Oh, wow it's amazing isn't it this is amazing work um let's talk about your childhood now you know we'll we'll take you you kind of go on this journey in this in this podcast interview so what was your childhood like you, you said you had your awakening at age of six but what was your surroundings were you, your household spiritual already or yeah that's oh it's it's such a profound and expansive question so my mom was really into yoga and my dad was a businessman and my mom was also a teacher and she 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 found the path of yoga and she absolutely loved it and while she was at yoga one day somebody uh, mentioned to her about Osho who was back then known as Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh and she decided to go and investigate and find out more. So she went to America to a festival over there. And she was there, well, I think she was there for a week, maybe two weeks. And she left me and my two sisters with our dad. And it was, we, you know, I can't remember her not being there, to be honest. But she had a very mind-opening, expanding experience while she was there. And then when she came back, um, my dad wanted to go. He was a businessman. He was very, um, he struggled with his emotions. He was often quite 
angry. I mean, I remember him as being quite, quite distant and angry when I was a child, actually. And so he was really searching for something to deal with these emotions and feelings. And for him, it was the right thing for him to want to go. So we all went back as a family, but it's hard to say this, but it wasn't we it wasn't a family decision or you know, we're gonna to go to America. It was my dad kind of making my mom go. So we all went as a family in the end. And it was a profound experience. We had three months in the middle of the Oregon desert in this commune that was purpose built. We lived in A-frames. Me and my sisters had one A-frame and my parents had the A-frame next to us. And we were there for three months. There was no street lights. So at night, the sky was full of stars. It was absolutely beautiful. We we could hear coyotes. We were very much in nature. You know, I remember seeing a snake when I was a kid. I wasn't scared at all. Now would be a different story, but, <laughs> but, but back then, no. Um, the other part of that was every morning we meditated and we did mantras. So from the age of seven, I was singing and or saying mantras and meditating. That was part of my introduction. But the part I missed out was when I was six at school, this is probably one of my earliest memories, um, I struggled to read and write and uh, my mum was asked to go into school and the teacher told her that, you know, she's no good at anything, she can't read and write. You know, we kind of written her off basically. My mum was really distraught about this, but she didn't know what to do. She, so anyway, this led to me being bullied one particular day and also being left out a lot, being separated from the class to, to, um, to be taught separately and all these kind of things. And I was picked on and somebody had actually, and I found this strange, but somebody had written something on the wall and I could read it and it was about me. And it really upset me. And I I went to another part of the playground on my own and I was really upset and sad and actually quite angry that I was being separated because I didn't feel like I should be separated, you know. Mm. And so what happened next was, was the most profound part of that story. And that's that I felt the wind around me after I'd moved to this other part of the playground. And in feeling that, I was feeling this sensation of being soothed by the wind. And as a child, I very much believed in magic. And I, I said out loud, I asked the wind to blow. And it did. And I asked it to stop. And it did. And I realized that there was something very profound going on here that I wasn't separate, separate from it. And I remember looking up at the trees and the sky and all of a sudden I went from sad, angry, upset to just a child in wonder, just completely like, wow, you know, I'm connected to everything. I'm interacting with, with everything. I mean, you know, I only had a small portion of the understanding that I have now because of where I was at, but I'm being so young. But I was like, wow, the the clouds are part of this, the trees are part of this, the, the wind, I'm connected to the wind, it can hear me, it's interacting with me. And this just soothes my whole body and my whole being. And honestly, after that, my next clear memory is my mom saying we're gonna go and live in America. And then being on the ranch, as we, we call it now, mm -hmm. um, it got nicknamed because everyone saying Rajneeshpuram was a bit of a mouthful. So. 
Um, it got nicknamed The Ranch. And it was almost like the universe, you know how we look back at life and we see how everything followed on from something else. And we can see like this path or this pattern and that nothing's ever wasted. And there's everything is always happening for a reason to show you the next thing, to show you the next thing. So there's this journey that we're going on. And when I was there, it was like I was given this opportunity to integrate these energies, to integrate this wisdom that I'd been given and and then to learn to meditate, to be sharing mantras, to be around a lot of very spiritual people who were also seeking mm. at such a young age. And it was, for me personally, it was a beautiful experience. I know there are many people that had awful experiences there, which I won't go into now. So everyone had a very different experience in that environment. We were all given jobs. My mom worked in the laundry for 12 hours a day. My dad was an electrician, that was his trade. So he, he, he did that for 12 hours a day. My two younger sisters went to the farm and worked with all the animals. They were actually uh, four and five at the time, um, possibly five and six. I can't, I'm not sure exactly. And I was supposed to be working in the boutique there, but I would just often run away and just go and walk by the river, get on one of the buses, go up to Buddha Hall, which was the great huge space that that still even looking at photographs today looks like something from another planet. <laughs> you know, this huge hall in the middle of an, the Oregon desert where we all used to go and meditate most evenings, if not every evening, and sit in and listen to, to our show. Um, he was actually in silence at that time, so his words would be played in that space and we'd go and we'd sit and sometimes I would fall asleep and I remember falling asleep there was just the feeling was just so it was coming home you know it was that soft cozy warm deeply connected beautiful feeling I had some of the best sleeps in that day <laughs> And then you get into the busy city life, and like, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. I, I, I can kind of resonate with one of the experiences you just mentioned about the wind. Um, this was like midst of my chaos of a awakening. <laughs> really, I was walking, and um, I just. I just felt good. I just, I don't know. I just felt good. I was like smiling and just walking and the wind was just here. And then I could feel it. I could feel it around me. And then I saw this kid just walked up to me and run up, just like pick me up, pick me up. And I'm like, okay, I pick, picked her up and her dad came running. So I'm sorry. She never does this to anybody. I'm so sorry. Especially with strangers. I was like, I know what she was. He's like, universe is like, I'm going to give you a hug. That's why that kid is here. And um, when I put her down and I'm just walking like about, about for about a minute and I saw the leaves just flying around me and I was, I felt like the wind was just around me, like, you know, and I just felt like, oh, and I was giddy. I was laughing. It was, it was like crazy. It was like, well, not crazy, but like I was in that state of like, oh my God, I'm guided, I'm protected. I'm surrounded by beings that I can't see and I I knew that to the core of my being but I just did not know how to explain it to anybody else without them thinking oh I've, you've gone crazy <laughs> right so now we talk about awakening so we talked a bit about awakening what is the deep what is the reason that we awaken like why do you, at this moment in our lives people a lot of people are going through awakening like thousands of years ago we had jesus we had buddha we had all these different ascended masters who were mm -hmm. going through awakening and society didn't really accept them mm -hmm. um 
but now it's like more and more rapid pace we're seeing mm-hmm. the experiences that they experienced thousands of years ago we're seeing it now at rapid pace it's like a known theme now what is happening there is it because we're ascending to different dimension or 3d 4d 5d yeah i i would say there's there's a few things happening so the the way i understand this is it's our evolution so instead of um you know growing another head or whatever else would be possible yeah. as we evolve we are evolving to bringing in more of what we are into the body so that we are embodying the universe Mm. and we are coming out of the mind and its limitations and we're becoming more more and more multi-dimensional beings with the awareness of the multi-dimensional aspect of ourselves Mm -hmm. what awakening does on a very practical level is it helps you see that you're connected to other people and that affects the heart and the way that we communicate the way that we connect with others because we know what we do to others we are doing to ourselves because there is no separation so that changes the choices that we make and it changes the direction of our lives and through awakening we actually begin to serve we move from a place of i want to do this for me you know to how can I serve humanity now? And it's very natural progression somehow from the selfish. I'm not Mm. saying there's anything wrong. There are certain aspects about being selfish that are helpful and useful, but to the selfless, because the self, the small self, the the I, the this is mine, that's yours, and we're all separate and I'm doing this for me, dissolves. With that recognition that I is everything and nothing and all of creation and that the I is the same I in you as in me, as in all of us, Then we look at life from a very different way. Mm. We look at life from a very different place. We have a completely different perspective. And in, from my own experience in my awakening, the recognition of that was so strong, so powerful, and so beautiful. I also knew that if this could happen to me, if this could happen to me and that me would dissolve, this is available for everybody else. And you don't have to go to a cave in India or, you know, any of these ideas that people may have been given through scripture, et cetera. It can happen anywhere at any time. And it is To awaken humanity is to bring all of humanity into service to itself. Mm. Then all wars end, all fighting ends. You cannot go into war if you know that that person is you. Mm. You can't even fight with somebody if you know that that person is you. If you truly awaken, you move from the head into a space of love, into a space of truth, into a space of integrity and compassion, a deep compassion for others. I'm not saying things won't get on your nerves. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Or that all of a sudden you're going to be joyful 24-7. There are 
There are states of bliss. There are states of profound bliss, of profound joy. But we are still in a human body, so these are all moving, ebbing, and flowing. Mm. The purpose of awakening is to know yourself. And that's the purpose of all of life is to know yourself on the deepest level. There isn't anything more than that. There's no more knowledge. There's no more wisdom. There's You can read everything you want to. You can watch everything you want to. But all of that will be emptied out in the truth of awakening. Do you feel, I mean, last three, four years has been very, very strange on the planet right and during covid times Mm -hmm. and it's it's interesting because a lot of shadows are coming up right now because through awakening comes shadow right because you in order to get to that blissful state you gotta clear work integrate a lot of your shadow So what do you, what do you think's been happening on a collective level over the last couple of years? What was the shift globally? So in, at the beginning of 2020, um, I think it was in the April. I was standing in my kitchen at my old house. There have been many changes in my life, (laughs) as there have for many, I know that. And I've always been very in tune from a young child. I've had lots of uh, spiritual experiences, psychic experiences. I've received information, if you like, and what happened on this particular day was I received some information about what was coming and I was given four very important sentences I feel um, and I and the interesting thing about this is I've kind of been watching all of this unfold mm. and I hope I can remember these correctly but I'm going to do my best so one was it's a reckoning and we all know what that means it means bringing all the darkness into the light, ju- making, creating justice, balancing everything. So it's a reckoning. The second coming, I understood that to mean Christ, the Christ light. And that is the Christ light, the awakening in all of us, mm. not a man on a cloud appearing, although he may do. <laughs> <laughs> it's more about the awakening from within, as within, so without. Once this, our inner world changes, our outer world also changes. Heaven on earth, which, again, this is part of the awakening. When we awaken to love, when we awaken to truth, when collectively we are awakening and that awakening is continuing and it's rippling out throughout the population, it's creating a whole new dimension, a whole new world, a whole new earth. And it's bringing the truth of what we are into the body and into this world, creating heaven on earth. That's how I understand that. And the other one, which was very shocking, um, was it's a holocaust and I didn't want to believe that one I had so, a lot of resistance around that because of the the associations with that word but in 2019 going back a little bit um through various things that were going on I I actually ended up going to have some medical tests done and um, you know there was a lot of pressure at this interview to to figure out what was going on with me I was 
it was actually hormonal stuff. But anyway, I remember breaking down in this in this kind of interview about my health and what was going on. And I, I actually said to the people there, uh, who must have thought I was crazy. And you know, that would that would be a fair assumption at the time. <laughs> I said, something's coming. I don't know what it is, but I've never felt like this in my entire life and something is coming. And I think they just, you know, they kind of wrote me off then. They were like, yeah, she's not very well. <laughs> I was just like, um, and then at the beginning of going forward a little bit, then in the beginning of 2020, my life was going a hundred mile an hour. And I did, I ended up managing uh, Trinari and I was going to London and I was seeing my friends' films and all, all there was just it was like all of a sudden everything went a hundred mile an hour and I was it's almost like the universe was saying right now you've got to see all your friends everyone you know you're gonna see them in like the next couple of months or the next you know and then in the March I had that download of that information that I've just shared with you sorry not March April it was well before the actual lockdown and my son was playing football at the time and he just came back one day and he said they just said we can't go back and for like another six weeks or so and as we know then everyone's world just changed but I was also given another piece of information which I didn't share with anyone because it would have seemed arrogant and it would have seemed, it just would have seemed really arrogant. And I was given the information that this will not harm you, that you don't have to be afraid. And literally that, that those words, that seed that was given to me, got me through that in a very different way. I actually ended up, creating community, opening my house to anyone and everyone who wanted to be there and offering meditation, offering tea. <laughs> people would make food. It, it just kind of, it went from, I think about eight people or maybe even six. We still well two of us in the beginning and then six and eight. Then every week there was like another 10 until there was probably about 40 of us. There was more, but we luckily they didn't all come at the same time. My house wouldn't have been big enough anyway. And it was as much for them as it was for me. And um, and it was knowing that, knowing that this wasn't going to touch me, knowing that I didn't need to be scared, knowing that, that the whole job if you like for me at that time was to sh keep showing up to continue to show up I didn't know what that was going to look like I didn't know there was going to be all these people in my house and looking back it's crazy how it all happened but it was what we all needed at the time and it was it, it was supporting everyone um, and, it, and it was supporting me but almost I became like this kind of leader, if you like. And it was, I got a lot of praise for doing it, for opening my house and stuff. And eventually, as with any big groups of people, you the egos come out, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with ego, we all have one, but the egos come out, the the judgments come out and things can shift quite quickly just from what somebody says or somebody does or something else. And then the dynamics in that group changed massively. And I went from, oh, this is amazing. Oh, you're amazing to, oh, you know, this is all dark. And it just like went from one extreme to another. I don't want to get into that too much because it's not something I enjoy talking about. Um, but I think the point really of, of what I'm saying is that 
we never quite know how life is going to call us, what we're going to be asked to do, how we're going to be asked to show up, what is going to happen and and how we'll be needed. And I think under those circumstances, I was needed in ways I couldn't even have, you know, couldn't even have considered really. Mm. Um, yeah. Since then, I mean, like since then there has been quite a lot of awakenings like I said like you know there's so many people nowadays it's like everywhere you like they're having some sort of awakening and you're especially during COVID times because you had to sit with yourself and that is yeah. something that we as a society in a world we don't do and for the first time in many people's life they had to and someone on the other extreme where you know breakdowns and turn to alcohol and 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 the others actually reflected on their lives what what is going on they had profound shifts um and it was kind of polarized and i just feel like since then we've been in the energy of are you coming with me or are you not are you coming with me or are you not? So it's like, it keeps, uh, it's like all the people that have been falling away mm. in the last couple of years. It's like, are you coming with me or not? Are you coming into this growth or not? And there are people who's choosing to not to expand. Like my friend um, was saying that the energies that's coming into the world right now is so strong that, some people's bod bodies can't take it and they have to leave this plane. Mm. I don't know if you've, you've experienced that or have you been told or... So, since 2020 specifically, I mean, I've lost a lot of people in my life and submit, but I've probably lost the most amount of people in the last three years hmm. almost to the point where every month somebody would leave the body so those words that I received um the holocaust specifically for me that that actually has been um a very clear reality that I, I've, had, I've been experiencing is many people have left unexpectedly, very unexpectedly. Uh, connections on my social media that I've been connected to, also close friends that I've known for years. And one lady, uh, Dawn, who I mentioned earlier, who was my cheerleader many years ago um, in... Uh, 2012 when I first started my my uh, spiritual events spiritual gatherings and um, that was that was a really big shock because mm. she was such a strong woman such a vivacious joyful bundle of energy <laughs> mm. and she she became ill with cancer. Um, I, I'd actually uh, just put this in a little bit more context. I'd I'd finished the events at, at Blisslands, which was the, her space in, I think it was um, 2017 or 18. And I was actually, I heard, um, as I often have had these downloads and it was, you know, it's time to finish this now. And in uh, 2020, maybe in 2021 now, excuse my memory. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I created something with a couple of other friends and we called it Born Free and it was a festival in um, Compton in Cheshire in the park. And it was where people couldn't gather. So, but we were gathering, you know, we were still gathering. And I'd asked her to speak at this festival. And she said, yeah, you know, I'd love to. So she, she came to the festival. And there was uh, 
a moment where we, we both needed we needed to go to the loo <laughs> this is <laughs> this is like probably not really. <laughs> so anyway um and we're we're near a wooded area but all, everything's short like the toilets are short and stuff so we both ended up going into the woods i've got this blanket so we have <laughs> like a little bit of <laughs> and um walking up into the woods we kind of started reminiscing and then when we were walking back down to the festival we, we were still reminiscing i was talking about the events and how amazing that she'd come into my life at the time she had how she supported me and she was saying how you know how grateful she was for me and, and for creating these events there and we just I've just found that we were kind of going into this this story of um, what had been created all those years ago and how we'd met and and I, this didn't escape me that we were talking about this and I wondered what the significance of that was why we were why all the past was coming up mm -hmm. in that way. And it felt profound. And I almost got a sense that maybe I won't see her again. But I didn't really know what that meant. It was just this, this feeling. Mm. And um, it turned out that it was, it was either just before that event or just after. It was around that time that she then discovered that she wasn't she wasn't very well and then things happened very very quickly and um she she left her body the following february mm. so that was in the june or july i think she she definitely knew by the November and then she left the following February and we all thought she would she would get through it we all thought there would be a miracle we fully expected it actually mm -hmm. knowing how she'd helped so many people how she'd always encouraged people she used to say to me, you know, when are you going to speak at your events? <laughs> or are you just going to like, are you just going to keep letting everyone, are you going to organise it? And then you're just going to not say anything. Yeah. And I'd be like, okay, okay. And then there were times when she'd be there and she'd be like, introduce me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. So she was this great cheerleader, not just for me, but for, for a lot, a lot of people. And she, she did a lot of good work as much as she could do in the time that she was here. Um, yeah, I mean, like, this is, yeah, it has been last three years. Like, we've had family members just die out of nowhere. Like, it was just mm -hmm. so rapid. Um, but that's the the energies that we're playing with right now is it's expansion or don't if you don't expand, then what you're going to get stuck and that energy can't move through you. Mm. Um, so let's talk about what is the role of a spiritual teacher and what is a mystic, right? So what is the role? So a mystic is essentially somebody who has had uh, spiritual experiences from a very young age. So I've always had from the age of six um, deeply spiritual, profound, sometimes very unusual experiences. So that's the definition of a mystic. So that I consider myself uh, a mystic, although I know these labels are passing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, we, you know, we use them to explain things. We use them to point in specific directions. And we use them to, to share and to show different aspects of life. But ultimately, 
labels are our labels for the human experience right yeah so a spiritual teacher so this is a great question because I think there are lots of spiritual teachers um I from my own experience from my own perspective in my opinion <laughs> if you like spiritual teachers are guides to help others through the process of awakening and I think it has to be from my, again from my own experience I didn't actually say I wanted to be a spiritual teacher mm. it wasn't even like a it wasn't even a word in my vocabulary what actually happened was I had a profound awakening um, as an adult in, in 2012 where I went into uh, a space of bliss and then another awakening in 2013 where my whole world was obliterated the whole house of cards fell down if you like and I saw myself as pure consciousness mm. with no name, no no death, no birth, just pure, pure awareness, pure consciousness. And then from that, some unusual things started to happen and people started to come to me. I started to share my experiences. I started to share the wisdom that seemed to be flowing through me after these and through these experiences. And then people started to show up and would message me and say I feel like I, I need to come uh, and speak to you or I feel like I want to work with you and and it kind of happened that way so it was like I wasn't trying to be anything it was more that the universe was giving me that opportunity through my own experiences to guide others and hold that space of presence for others to fall into that deep mm. experience of who they are. Um, so I I would say a spiritual teacher is one that isn't isn't trying to create a hold on anyone, isn't trying to have followers or allows whoever needs their guidance to come in and and move move out of their life you know so there's a flow there I think once you get into the realms of creating community creating specifically spiritual community ashrams then the dynamics can get very ski whiff and people can see the spiritual teacher in a way where they put them on a pedestal, but actually what the spiritual teacher is doing is being a representation of presence. Mm. And instead of saying, oh, worship, worship them, it's that they are there as a guide specifically to show you the truth of who and what you are but many get confused between the two and then worship the guru or the spiritual teacher and forget the message the message is the most important thing presence is the most important thing so me having this label now over these years through various through various things and also working with lots of spiritual teachers and bringing many to my events over the years um, at Bliss Lands. I had so many teachers from all over the world in many different forms, sharing their gifts and their experiences and their work and their music and all, all these incredible things. I had some fabulous musicians as well. Um, and 
through awakening, you can share that presence, you can share that truth in many different ways. And so I, I feel that the, the role of the spiritual teacher is to be a guide. Mm. It is true, like, you know, many people do form an attachment as in like you are going to come and save me when you know they're just guide to say you can save yourself I'm just guiding you um I do I do get that um so what's next for you like what are you planning on doing like what's your vision so well this year specifically actually I've I've spoken in a lot more uh, I've spoken at a lot more events and festivals. I've shared Darshan in a lot more places. I've with the with the Darshan I've shared meditation. I've, I've helped people with their emotions, and I've also been sharing the frequency work as well now. So moving forward. I feel like my my mission, if you like, is to continue to share presence and meditation with, with as many people who feel connected to me and what, what I'm offering. If they feel that I am the right one for them to come to, mm. then that's how I wanna show up for those people that feel that I'm the right one. And that's not to say that they may go to other spiritual teachers or they may have already been to other spiritual teachers or they may not have been to any. I don't know what their journey will have been. But I am here as a guide to bring people into that space of truth and knowing who they are. And I do that even through my words on social media. People People have, have mentioned that to me and through my one-to-one, through my events, through my gatherings, through my retreats, through, through anything that I've been yeah. sharing really. I feel that that's needed right now. You know, like we're talking about the energies that so we really need that right now. Um, and I think I, I see I see that as, yeah, it's, it's great. I see that really like I I would if I needed guidance was like the energy like can you what's going on <laughs> with the energies <laughs> and you were like right then <laughs> um um okay so I have some rapid fire questions for you um which I ask all of my guests really <laughs> um so what is your definition of God life universe all that is beautiful what do you think happens when you die nothing <laughs> nothing you just chill in the other row <laughs> oh you gotta just picture everybody just sitting meditating it's like and so peaceful no ego whatsoever we drop the body that's it we just yeah. drop the body yeah how do you define religion and spirituality Religion is indoctrination. Spirituality is freedom. Beautiful. What's the lesson that took you the longest to learn? That everything is exactly as it needs to be. Mm. Do you believe that people with horrible beginnings end up creating the best futures? People with challenging beginnings often end up creating the best futures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I am fully in present moment when? Now. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> it's a very vision focused. <laughs> Do you believe that there is an end to healing? Yes. It's a deep acceptance of yourself. Ooh. That, but you might have to come through like lifetimes to get to that sometimes, right? Um, the world needs more of what? 
love. Yeah, it does. Love and connection. Love right. and presence. Yeah. Essential. Beautiful. So what is that one message that you would give to someone who's going through adversity, who's going through dark night of the soul and can't see or spiritual like awakening, can't see the light at the end of the tunnel? What would you say to them right now? Keep going. Don't give up. I feel that the, the most difficult times the dark nights of the soul are when you really get to know what you're made of. Mm. Mm. I agree. How can people contact you? There's so many ways. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Facebook on my Elevate Your Mind page. Um, email Deanne at Elevate Your Mind dot life you can also check out my website which is www.elevateyourmind.life you can find me on instagram elevateyourmind.life um i'm also on facebook at dng i've got two profiles on there um i'm also on youtube as well if you check out if you want to check out my videos on youtube it's uh, dng um and TikTok, DNG, <laughs> anyway, <yeah. laughs> DNG official. There's some dodgy videos of me dancing somewhere on there. Um, I think that's something else that I really want to say is through all these profound experiences, I am so human. Somebody met me the other day and they were like, I've seen you floating around and just thought you were like this floaty, sort of <laughs> un unapproachable, you know up here somewhere and I said no I'm very vulnerable I'm really I'm very down to earth I have I have ups and downs you know I'm and I think this is the important thing I'm teaching from that place I'm not saying oh you know come and sit with me and all your worries will be over I mean maybe they will be but I'm coming from that place of of true you know, the mess, the mud, the the stuff that grows the lotus, essentially. Yeah, and that is so true because we feel like we go to our friends or even our guidance or spiritual teachers asking, that, thinking that they have it all figured out. But the truth is nobody's got anything figured out. No. We're just passing on the tools that might resonate with you, might not. And that's okay, right? And we are humans, you know, we still go up and up, up and down. And I get that a lot, like yeah. motivational speaking. I give people all this motivation, but sometimes I need motivating, you know, sometimes I need like my friends to lift me up. And sometimes I feel like, okay, I want to cry all day and I'm feeling sorry for myself. And then, you know, you get, get back up and experience life. And that's what it is. It's not easy. It's not easy. This life, you know, we not, you know, but you just... You just keep going. You just keep going. And that's all you can do. It's either keep growing or don't. And if you don't, then you suffer. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, life is about the expansion. That's that's why we're here, to expand into more of what we are and, and on a very human level to work through all of our, all of the things that, that may hold us back in some way. Mm. We're, we're we're all on this journey together and as Randas so beautifully said we're all well walking each other home you know oh. we're, we're all here to walk each other home and I think I'll leave it there <laughs> yeah that's so beautiful because I interviewed somebody yesterday and she said exactly the same that we're all walking each other home and I'm like and then you came and just same quote it's crazy <laughs> it's like maybe it's a reminder maybe for our listeners or maybe for myself we're all just walking home you're walking each yeah home. we yeah. are we're, and i mean you know sometimes that literally means holding each other's hand on the, on the way mm. yeah. support vulnerability connecting with others yeah because we're all you know 
we're actually all divine sparks of the one and we are God getting to know itself as many. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you for coming on this podcast and sharing your wisdom, your vulnerability, your story, your knowledge. Um, I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure it's going to help so many of the listeners out. Um, and, you know, you can, uh, I'm talking to the listeners, you can contact Dianji on all of the platforms that she mentioned before. Thank you for coming on and sharing your wisdom. Thank you so much for asking me. Absolute pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this episode. I would absolutely love to know what your biggest takeaway from this conversation has been. You can share your thoughts on my Facebook or Instagram, Madia Sosen. If you would like to watch this episode, then head over to my YouTube channel, Madia Sosen. If you enjoyed this episode, then please do rate and share this with your family and friends as that will help me out a lot. Thank you so much once again, and I will see you in the next episode.